Hi, this is Marcus and today we will be talking about bug report quality. To be exact, we will talk about requirements that you need to follow in order to get your bug report approved by our team leaders. Before I show you the bug report form, all of its input fields and before I talk about all the requirements for each of those fields, let's go and find a bug. I will use this exemplary bug to show and explain to you how it should be documented according to our rules. Now let's go and find a bug that we can use. In the test that you currently see on your screen, you are asked to test the test.io website. Here's the URL. When you visit this URL, you will be redirected to this website. Now we want to test the become a tester workflow, which can be found at the very top of the page in the header navigation. When you click on this button, you will be redirected to this page now. Now, when we click on the sign up button, we expect that the registration form will become accessible and we can sign up as a tester. But when we click on it, we will realize that the same page reloads and nothing happened besides that. So we cannot sign up as a new tester. That's actually a critical bug for a platform that tries to acquire new testers. Let's go back and document that bug. Now at the very bottom of the page you will see three features. The correct one for our bug is become a tester because we tested this section. So we have to click on the submit bug button to open the bug report form. The next step is to select the right bug type for our bug. Since only functional bugs were being asked for in this test, we can only select functional in the drop-down menu. For functional bugs, you will also be asked to select a severity that fits them. We have three levels. We have low, high or critical. Since we already decided that this must be a critical bug, let's select critical. In the next field, you will be asked to give your bug report a title. The title is one of the most important fields of the whole report because it's the first thing that somebody reads and it's also important because bug reports are distinguished by the title. So if your title is not descriptive enough or too general then people will not be able to distinguish between different bug reports and will be forced to read through all of its details which should of course not be the case. Titles should be precise, detailed enough but not too long at the same time. What information should be included are the concerned elements. This could, for example, be the search field. Um, also, what functionality is broken and the origin of. For our given bug, let's see if we can come up with a title that satisfies all of these requirements. What about this one? Button does not work. So. Put yourself in the shoes of a reader who has never seen your bug report and who does not know what the problem is. So when reading button does not work, the reader does not know anything about the bug besides that a button is uh, concerned and that something is not working. Now, it doesn't say anything about what button it is and what doesn't work and what the consequences are. Let's see if we can add the missing information. What about this one? button sign up does not react after clicking on it. Okay, not bad. We added some information. Now we know what the button label is. It's sign up and we know that we clicked on it and we know it doesn't react. But there's one thing missing and that's the consequence. Let's try a different one. Registration impossible because sign up button does not react. I think that's a pretty good one. Um, we have all the information we need. We know what element is concerned. It's, it's the button. We know which button it is. We know what you did. You clicked on it. It doesn't react. And the consequence. The registration is impossible. So that's all we need. Another bad example by the way would be registration is not possible or registration does not work. Again we know, okay, the registration is concerned, but we don't know what you did and what the actual problem is. Summing up, here are five things that you should keep in mind when trying to come up with a good bug report title. Number one, 
As a rule of thumb, your title should be as short as possible but as long as necessary. Your title is a summary of the problem. Number two, describe what is happening and not what is not happening. When you say something does not work, you describe what is not happening. And that doesn't really help. Number three, does not work and any variations of it are not allowed. Number four, if a bug only occurs under some conditions, these conditions must be included in the title. So for example, if you have to enter a specific age, or if you have to check a certain filter for the bug to appear, then this condition must be named in the title. Number five, write a title, read it out loud, and if you don't understand it without any further information, adjust it. Let's move on to the next field. The URL field only needs to be filled out if you test a website, which is the case for our bug. Um, if you test a mobile app instead, then you can just leave it blank because there is no URL. So for our bug, we just go to the URL bar, we copy and paste it into the field. That's all we have to do. The URL needs to be the URL of the page where the bug occurs on. In the steps section, you have to provide a detailed step-by-step -step guide about what steps you performed to reach the bug. The very first step always has to start with the given test environment. If you test a website, that's the test URL, in our case test.io. But if you test an app, it is the app name. You describe the launch of the app. Afterwards, you have to provide all steps that you took from there. What buttons you press, what links you follow and what you enter. At the very end, your last step must describe the action that you perform that finally triggers the bug. So after your last step, the bug must appear. For our bug, the first step should be something like this. Open the website and now we have to paste the test environment URL, which happens to be the same as the Langlang page. So we just copy and paste it into the first step. Now what we did is we clicked on the become a tester button in the header. So let's describe that. Click on become a tester in the header. And our final step was to click on the sign up button. So click on the sign up button. So that's our last step and after clicking on the sign up button our bug occurs because nothing happens, the button does not react. Please note two more things. One, try to phrase your steps as general as possible. So if details are not relevant then just don't mention them. For example, if you cannot add a product to the cart in a web shop uh, and this happens for all products, then you don't need to write down what product overview page you visited and what product detail page you clicked on. And number two, uh, please use realistic names if you have to provide details. So for example, if you were asked to provide what credential to use, um, your username or password, then please use names um, that are actual words and not something that you smash into your keyboard. To describe the result, we actually have two fields. The expected result field, which should describe the ex your expectation after performing your last step, and the actual result field to describe what happened instead. So that's the field where you describe your bug in detail. So let's start with the expected result. Um, after clicking on the sign up button, we did expect that the registration process would start and that the registration form would show up. So let's let's write that down. The registration form opens and the registration process starts. And what happened instead was that um, nothing happened. The button did not react. Hence, I am not able to register as a tester at test.io. Make sure that your expected result and your actual result are actually different. 
it doesn't make any sense if both of them just differ by one or a few words. Um, your expectation is completely different from what you describe as the bug. The actual result field is probably the most important field of your bug report. So make sure to spend extra time when describing your bug. Here you also make examples and are very specific um, so that the reader understands the full extent of the problem. Moving on to the next field, here we are asked to provide a tag or multiple tags, but you can actually leave that field blank because it's a duplicated feature and we are no longer using it, at least for the moment. The next field asks you to upload attachments such as screenshots, screencasts and crash logs if you reported a crash. For this demonstration I already recorded a screencast and will now upload it to the report. The last thing you have to specify is what device and browser you used. Usually in most tests you will only be able to select one device because you are invited for a specific device. In that case you only have to select the browser for the only available device. Let's pretend we used Google Chrome so let me click on that and now we can submit the form. Perfect, here it is, we made it. There is one more rule that I would like to explain. It's called the straight rejection rule. Test.io expects you to invest enough time in the documentation of your bug reports. If your report does not meet the requirements, then it might get rejected. In general, our Academy article contains more examples and further information about some of the aspects we talked about today, so it's definitely a good idea to check it out. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in some of our other videos.